A 10 investigates follow up tonight. Last night, we told you about a police investigation into pediatric dentist Ronald Griffin. There are two active investigations into accusations that he physically mistreated children in his care. One complaint from a parent, the second from a dental assistant. And 10 investigates found these were far from the first such accusations by patients against him. Yet he's never been charged with a crime or disciplined by the Ohio Dental Board. We are certainly glad you're joining us for 10 TV News at 530. I'm Tracy Townsend. And I'm Yolanda Harris. We have team coverage on this story tonight. 10 TV's Brittany Bailey has expert advice for parents when you take your kids to the dentist. But first, 10 TV's Glenn McIntyre looks at the gaps in the system to help keep kids safe and the push for reform. Between 2004 and today, seven parents and one dental assistant filed police reports against Chillicothe pediatric dentist Ronald Griffin. In the reports, each accuses him of physically mistreating young children. 10TV spoke on camera with the families of five of those patients, three of whom filed police reports, two who did not, but say they filed complaints with the state dental board. We also spoke with multiple women who worked in Griffin's office who say they witnessed him physically mistreat children to the point of leaving bruises and broken blood vessels. Yet police say they didn't have the evidence to seek charges against him and the state dental board says he has a clean disciplinary history. Dr. Griffin, Glenn McIntyre. Tell me why. Because we don't have anything to talk about. After he declined three separate interview requests, we caught up with Dr. Griffin outside his Chillicothe office. We have eight families on record accusing you of mistreating their children. I understand that. What do you say yes. to that? I have no comment. And if, if, have if, you ever physically harmed a child? No, I've not. Or been rough, unintentionally rough? No, not intentionally rough. But my, my attorneys advise me not to talk. Despite eight different police reports and at least seven complaints with the state dental board, Griffin has never been charged with a crime or disciplined by the board. Amber Oaks filed a police report and a dental board complaint in 2017 after Griffin treated her daughter Evie. It is heartbreaking. I don't understand if people have been making complaints, if people have been going to the police, going to the dental board, why this man hasn't been shut down. He should not be allowed to practice on children. He should not be allowed to continue to do this. How many people is it going to take? to get him out of there. How many people is it going to take to shut him down so that he can't do this anymore? It was a question we heard again and again from parents. That's what I don't understand. With so many complaints and this happening for so many years. In some cases, like a 2004 visit involving a three-year-old girl named Faith, there was a witness. According to the police report, this woman was in the room when she says Griffin handled the girl with excessive force. Chillicothe police admit they did not try to contact the assistant at the time. After this transpired, they should have definitely followed up. They could have called me. Um, bruising is enough to be concerned with. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunate part, she was so little, so they're not going to take her account of the story. In the other cases, Chillicothe police said they just didn't have the evidence to charge Griffin with a crime. If it hasn't meet, met that threshold, you know, just because you complain on somebody that says, hey, this has been going on, unless it meets that threshold of probable cause, we can't file charges on it. Is there anything here that concerns you about this doctor's conduct? I think that it may be something that, you know, a state board should look at. At least seven people, parents and employees, tell us they did file complaints with the Ohio State Dental Board. Dental board records are confidential unless the board issues discipline, which it has never done against Griffin. We asked the dental board if they were aware of the police reports filed against Griffin, but they wouldn't comment. Is there anything that requires you guys, or is there any policy or practice that if you get a complaint about a professional, a doctor, a dentist, a, you know, whatever, that even if it doesn't rise to a criminal level, that it, is, it does go to that board automatically, or do you guys forward those, or? Um. I mean, not really, and there's no procedure or policy that says it. Captain Ron Meyer says that's something that should change. If there's not the probable cause to file criminal charges, then we should, you know, either be forwarding it to, in this case, since it's a medical professional, a medical board or a governing board for them to look at it. So if we don't think there's enough criminal charges, then, you know, should we be forwarding it to somebody else? Probably. 
Dr. Paul Casamassimo has been in pediatric dentistry for 40 years and is a past president of the American Academy of Pediatric Dentistry. He says there is a need for reform industry-wide, contrasting dentistry with the medical field in this January article. Dentistry has no such culture or accountability except at the most serious level. And in my experience as an observer of these events in children, many events are shelved or dealt with below the radar. State dental boards may not be required to make their actions public. We don't have a bar in, in dentistry to, um, to say what needs to be reported and what doesn't. So, um, you know, I, I tell people, you know, did you ever, my colleagues, have you, did you ever hear about the uh, young woman in, in Chicago area who uh, choked on a cotton roll you know, that the dentist used? Nobody's heard of that. It was never made public. And um, there are other examples of, of situations. They're very rare, but they happen. But we should know about those. We should be told. They should, they should be reported, quantified, and we should be told about them so that uh, we know as dentists how to do better. And then the public knows to be aware of those that they could happen. And so when you say we should know that, do you mean just fellow professionals or do you mean we as a society, we as parents, we as patients and consumers? Everybody. Everybody should know it. Some things that you as a patient or as a private citizen would say, oh, no, that's not important at all. The medical system, and I hopefully at some point the dental system will say, no, that's happened a little too frequently. That's why we need a system. We need a system yeah, to track that'll... even what seems inconsequential. To oh, see okay. the fact it's a pattern and it's a pattern that could lead to a big problem. My fear is that I just don't want a child to be injured or hurt. Um, because nothing is done and there needs to be some changes made. If it was one case or one here or there, you know, you're going to have, you know, an issue maybe I, I could see, but just, it's an insane amount. When do we start listening to the kid's voice? I mean, they're not, they're not making it up. Not every child is making up the same thing. Every it, there's just no way that all these same kids that don't even know each other. It's not like they're all in high school and saying, hey, rumors fly. These are individual five, six, seven, eight-year-old kids that, that have never met each other. So when do we start listening to a child that's begging for help? Glenn McIntyre, 10 TV News. Our investigation is already getting the attention of state lawmakers. Today, we spoke with Republican State Senator Stephanie Kunze and Democratic State Representative Kristen Boggs. Both say as mothers and lawmakers, they are disturbed by what we uncovered. And both already plan to look into issues of transparency and communication involving the dental board and police. If you've got from 2004 to 2020 similar complaints and may or may not have been all filed with the dental board, may or may not have all been filed with the police. If those two systems don't talk, but even if you have a few of them, I would think that that would start to raise flags. Um, and so I just want to, I want to look into it further to see, is there, there might be possible legislation that needs to come. I do understand that it is typical for investigations to not be subject to public records requests when they are ongoing. Um, I do have questions as to why, if these investigations has, have been closed and no misconduct have, has been found, how they are still shielded from public records requests. I want to be able to know that. I am putting my child in their hands, in their care, and there should be no reason why I shouldn't have a full picture of, of their professional experience with children. Tillicothe police tell 10 TV they have two active investigations into Griffin, one filed by a parent, the other filed by a dental assistant. Police say those cases will be sent to the Chillicothe law director to determine whether he will be charged. Under Ohio law, even the existence of a complaint to the state dental board is confidential. It doesn't become public unless the dental board finds wrongdoing and issues discipline. Dr. Griffin has a clean record with the dental board. The public is not allowed to know more than that. When 10TV tried to sit down with the dental board, they declined, telling us they weren't comfortable speaking with us on camera. Griffin has also never been charged with a crime and in emails to 10TV, 
denied any wrongdoing. Now, yesterday, our investigation aired, and before it aired, Dr. Griffin posted a lengthy statement on Facebook. In that statement, he says he does not and has never used active restraint on patients, and that 99% of patients receive care in his office without incident or complaint. Dr. Griffin said in the vast majority of appointments, parents are in the treatment room and oversee care. Dr. Griffin said he uses alternative methods to calm and reassure children if necessary, and most often parents guide that treatment. Now, if you'd like to read his full statement, you can go to our website, 10tv.com.